Let's talk about MCP, Model Context Protocol, for a moment. I created the video a while back, but now I want to do a little more deeper dive into what this technology can do. The easiest way to think of it is as a plug-in architecture. Some people call it the USB of large language models. In other words, a plug-in architecture for the client-side applications which wrap a large language model. So if you're building an application that uses chat completions and you're used to things like tools and capabilities like structured output, then you can plug MCP servers into that. And typically that means you already have a host application. So we'll show you one of those that is pre-built already. But the idea of MCP is that it can expose tools, those tools, of course, to be dynamically invoked by callback from the model. It can also expose resources like access to certain data, and that would be consumable by your application code, the Python code or JavaScript code or Java code you're wrapping around that model. And then prompts. Prompts are kind of like predefined templates, meaning you can have uh, you know insights, if you will, as to how your MCP server ought to be called by having a predefined template uh, prompt there. Uh, let's show you a couple of those examples. I don't have any resource examples, but I got the other two. So on the from the coding standpoint, here's an example of JavaScript, right? So it's simply a server-side set of code that in turn can be a client of another server-side set of code. In other words, this is server-side code. Now, when I say server-side, I don't mean it has to run on a server. It can run on the, on the laptop. It can run on a Windows machine. But it is expecting to be invoked by the MCP client, by, let's say, Cloud Desktop, by the, by the application that's consuming it. And it, in turn, can call another API. Like in this case, it actually reaches out and calls um, the TMDB, right? So the moviedatabase.org API. Uh, here's another simple example where it's just a hello world. You can see this is Python-based, and it has a nice little MCP tool here, which comes from the fast MCP. API from the MCP team. So you just simply declare what your tools are, give them a nice description, always give good descriptions as descriptive as possible. So that way the large language model knows what you mean by these things as you expose tools to it. And then here's a Java example. You can see here's some, again, nice tool examples. This is Quarkus, Langchain for J, and you can define what your tools are. And, uh, and, and expose those. This is another example though, where it's also a client server of a client server, the client, ask the tool, the tool basically says, I am a client of another server, in this case, the API uh, for apiweather.gov. And here's the one I'm actually gonna show you though, because this is one of the more powerful ones. This is one Max Anderson created. This is a JDBC based one, meaning you can talk to any database you want. There's two prompts in here, visualize ERD, create sample data, and uh, many, many tools for interacting with uh, a database, right? So you can see all those different tools there, describe table, create a table, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. List all tables. So let's actually go see that one in action. Again, you need a good client-side tool to do that. Cloud Desktop, being the people who invented MCP, were the first to do that. You can look right here and see there's a little icon right here that says, "Here are our MCP-based tools." listed right there, uh, and you can also click here, right? You can get more information. What are the MCP servers? You can see there's MCP uh, server JDBC and weather. By the way, this file I keep over here is the cloud desktop config underscore underscore there uh, dot json file and you got to have that in the correct location in case of a mac here library application support uh, put that you got to create a file and then add the appropriate json there and so you got to hopefully find someone who knows what this json is or you can kind of try to type it here off my screen hopefully it hasn't changed since by the time you watch this video but this is the way to describe uh, in the case of cloud desktop the types of MCP servers it has access to, okay? And this one has access to my local Postgres that I'm running. So my local Postgres, you can see here via PG admin, it has access to this database called My MCP. And if I come down over here and look at it, you can see there are no tables here yet, okay? It's an empty blank database that I created it because I want Cloud Desktop to have control of it, all right? The client now has control of it. So you can see, I can immediately do something like pick a prompt. You saw the prompts earlier. Here's uh, sample data. And I might want uh, something like cheetahs, right? So I'm a big fan of wildlife. And I noticed cheetah conservation is a big deal and a big challenge. So I can say, build me a database about cheetahs. Now, at this point, I'm kicking this out to um, Sonnet, in this case, from Cloud Desktop's perspective. And it's going to figure out the rest. It just knows I want cheetah information. It's going to presume I want cheetah conservation information. And I want a whole database based on that. So I'm going to basically tell it to allow uh, my MCP server invocations there. And it'll probably prompt me a few times. There we go. Create table. Yes, I want to create a table. If we look down here, it's going to start creating tables for me. Uh, reserves, cheetahs. Uh, let's see what else we might have here. 
Okay, so it's working like in an agentic way, going through the process of doing all the things it wants to do, and it has full access to that MCP server with like write queries, query the database, create tables, interact with the database information. And if we go look over here, by the way, if we go refresh, we should see that it is filling up there, all right? So we now have three different tables, and I have cheetahs here with different columns. Let's look at that. And, and I can also say view. It'll also populate it with default data. There we go. The default data is flowing in there now. And, you know, I'm getting my full database system for tracking cheetahs across multiple reservations. And the data actually looks quite good. I see it's, uh, it talks about the Masamara. Mara. Um, it talks about, you know, being in East Africa, which is where the areas I've traveled to and I'm most interested in. Let's let it finish up. It looks like it's taking its little time here. Okay, good, good. It looks like it's getting pretty happy with the database configuration it created. All right, what would I like to do next? Okay, so let's do this. Remember, we also had a prompt for ER diagram. Uh, show me the ER diagram. Okay, and I'm just going to interact with it plain English. So let's do that, and let's see what it can figure out there. It can basically now explore my database schema. And this works, by the way, with a read-only database. It works with, in a situation where I, I didn't create the database. You can ask it to explore database schema. All right, there we can see our the three tables that it has there. Um, any interesting trends? And let's see if it actually can do some analysis for us, like some trend analysis of what it might find in the data that it gave us. Uh, uh, okay, read, run a query here. Allow for this chat. Okay. Once you allow for the chat, by the way, it basically will be able to invoke that same tool again and again and again in, within the context of this chat. Let's see what it finds here. It's trying to uh, issue a select statement. It's looking at hunting activity is what it looks like here, hunting attempts. Uh, cheetahs are interesting because they hunt during the daytime. Unlike lions, which always hunt at night, cheetahs hunt during the day, partly so they can avoid the lions. Lions, of course, are the number one reasons why cheetahs um, are, are die because they prey upon the cheetahs. Uh, in terms of wiping out that conflict there. Let's see, what do we got here? It also has analyzed the gender aspects of that. Oh, will it create a dashboard for me? Yes, please, create create a dashboard for me. Let's see what it'll do there. Uh, this, oh, by, by the way, was a mermaid diagram, I believe. And now we're going to get, a, yeah, we're going to get a React dashboard. So it's going to, it knows you can generate React code for me and build me a little dashboard there. You can see there's the Kruger National Park, there's Serengeti. Uh, so I've been to most of those parks they listed there, which is an interesting. You can also see the data there, type of prey that they prey on. That looks pretty normal to me as well. But So I can't say all the data is 100% accurate, but from my you know, uh, quick glance at it, it looks pretty good. And here's the worst case scenario. I got to go in there and do some work myself, but I have an existing working database now that I can see little dashboards on. I can understand the database schema. And now if I want, I can go use another tool to build a whole application around this if I choose to. So this is an incredibly powerful MCP server. You can see others though, as long as you have an MCP server that wraps another API, in this case it wraps JDBC, which is an amazing API. It does anything you want with the database. But you could have any other API, whether it be talking to movie databases, talking to Ansible, talking to anything for that matter. Uh, and then you can um, interact with it from Cloud Desktop's perspective. There are other clients like the MCP CLI, what I put in my other demo, uh, which is an open source technology you can get from GitHub, and you can then interact with it from command line. And you can also write your own custom clients and build out something as awesome as Cloud Desktop if you choose to. All right, that's my quick MCP demo, and hopefully it gives you a different feel or a feel for how MCP servers work.